Let's, uh, let's pray before we get into God's word this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord God, this is more than just um, words written out on a page, Lord God. Holy Spirit directed, Father God. They are your heart written out to us, Father God. Our lives are found in your word, yes, Lord God. So as we go through this, this uh, these scriptures today, Lord God, speak to us. Lord God, about who we are, about who you are, about about how we are to be, Lord God. And I just pray that uh, your word rings out true today, Lord God, in our hearts. Father God, that we may hear what you have to say, Lord God, that our hearts will receive it, Lord God, that we'll be uh, strong and courageous for you to go out and live that way, Lord God, that your glory can be revealed in our life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Rock and roll. All right. <laughs> Amen. Have you, oh, you know what? This is Thanksgiving time, oh. right? Yep. I'm so ready for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I was so hanging on to like summer. It was it's October and then November. I'm like, it was just summer, it seemed. But no, I'm ready. I'm ready for Thanksgiving. Yes. <coughs> Have you ever met someone who just seems impossible to please? Yeah. 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 I think everybody has, you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't need to point fingers. <laughs> I found this story. Oh, yeah, sorry. I think he's going to do this. I found this story online about a, a large dog, a Great Dane. You know what the Great Danes are? Almost like the size of a horse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Great Dane, he walks into a butcher shop carrying a purse in his mouth. He puts the purse down and he sits right in front of the meat counter. What is it, boy? The butcher asks jokingly. You want some meat? Woof! The dog answers. Hmm, the butcher says. Well, what kind? You want some liver? Bacon? Steak? Woof! The dog interrupts. Well, how much steak do you want? Do you want a half pound? Do you want a pound? Woof! The dog says. The amazed butcher, he wraps up a pound of meat, and then he finds the money in the dog's purse. Mm -hmm. As the dog leaves, a man who was waiting in line, watching everything that was going on, he decides to follow the dog. Well, the dog goes down the street, it enters an apartment house, climbs to the third floor, begins scratching at the door. With that, the door swings open, and this angry man starts shouting at the dog. Stop, yells the other man. He's the most intelligent animal I've ever seen. Intelligent, says the man. This is the third time this week that he forgot his key. <laughs> I, that was the reaction I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> But have you ever felt like that man? Right, you see something amazing, right? And uh, something that's like, wow, you want to share this with people, and it's met with less than than enthusiastic yep. response, maybe even unthankful. It's like, don't you realize that? This Thursday is Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. What do you think of when you think of Thanksgiving? Eating? Football? A long <laughs> weekend? Shopping? <laughs> The history of Thanksgiving, family. <coughs> you know, Thanksgiving is much more than any of this. That's right. Yeah. True Thanksgiving is not just a day of food, football, and family. It's not just a holiday uh, every fourth Thursday in November. <coughs> See, for God's people, every day ought to be Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. See, Thanksgiving Day. You know, it's actually, it's a distinctive holiday. Mm -hmm. It doesn't commemorate a battle or anyone's <coughs> birthday. It's simply a day set aside to express our thanks to God. Amen. Did you know that in 1789, George Washington made a public proclamation saying that, saying that it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. Wow, that's a president right there. 
He recommended and, and assigned Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, to be the day of Thanksgiving. Of course, most of us know the story of the pilgrims, right? How they, they and the Indians in that area had that, that Thanksgiving feast. That was back in 1621, long before Washington's pro proclamation. But you know what? Even earlier than 1621, we find people offering up thanks to God. You know, in the Old Testament, we find a, a, a psalm of, of thanksgiving. Psalm 100. So it'll be a psalm of thanksgiving. It's an invitation to join together to acknowledge the great things that, that God has done in our lives. So let's just read it's five verses. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. Verse 1 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Amen. Verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, to be thankful for that. Now in this, this psalm we see three things about thankfulness. The first thing that we see is there's an invitation. There's an invitation to thankfulness. See, Thanksgiving is a time that we set aside just to remember to give thanks to God for all that we have. So we are invited to be with God. Amen. And in being with God, we give him thanks and praise. Let's look at verse 4 again. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. <coughs> in this verse is the invitation to thanksgiving, uh, to thankfulness. Think about that. God invites us into his presence. Amen. He's inviting us to <coughs> He's inviting us to respond to his love and to his grace. Mm -hmm. God wants to spend time with us. Amen. So he gives us an invitation. Jeremiah says pretty much the same thing in Jeremiah chapter 7. In verse 2 it says, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who enter the gate, these gates to worship the Lord. You know, going someplace to worship God with others, that, that was a common concept in the Bible. <coughs> God asked his Old Testament people to come to the temple to worship. They could praise God. They could pray to God. They could sing to God anywhere, just like today. But when push came to shove, the major focus of, of worship for the people of God was at the temple. Mm -hmm. They came to the temple to pray. So what God was doing here was, was driving home the fact that worship, it isn't about us. God never designed worship to be a, a lone ranger kind of thing where we can just go off into our own little corner and ignore the rest of, of God's people. Oh, we got to have those alone time with God. Yes. But God called his people to enter his gates with thanksgiving, to enter his courts with praise, all of us. Well, how are we going to do that, Pastor? <laughs> There's no temple anymore, right? It was destroyed in 70 AD. Well, is the church building the new temple? No. No? We talk about going to church. But the building we meet in is not the church. It's just a building. That's right. I mean, granted, we dedicated this building to the worship of God. <laughs> but the building is not the church. You know what the church really is? Yeah, that's right. We are the church. The people gather here today. In fact, we are the temple. We're the temple of God. 
in years. I'm not just telling you these things because I like the way it sounds. <laughs> I do like the way it sounds. But in Ephesians chapter 2, we read verses 19 through 22 says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are fellow citizens with the saints and you are members of the household of God. Amen. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22. Amen. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Wow, this is who we are. This is the church. You can't contain the church in a building. No. So church... Worship is when we gather together to sing praises. Amen. To give thanks. Amen. To give praise. Amen. That's what we do as Christians. Amen. And it's what God asks of us. He desires that we enter His gates with thanksgiving and enter His courts with praise. To give thanks to Him and to praise His name. Amen. So what about you? How do you respond to, to the love and to the mercy of Jesus? Do you just take it for granted and, and forget it? Or do you accept God's invitation to draw near and give thanks? What do you think motivated the, the psalmist here to, to, uh, to give thanks like this? What motivated him to enter and to give thanks and to give praise? I think it's God's character motivated him. It's his love. It was his faithfulness throughout all the years that motivated him to go into his gates and to give him thankful, thanks and praise. If you look at verse 5, Psalm 100, verse 5, it says, For the Lord is... This is why I want to enter into his gates and give him thanksgiving and praise, because for the Lord is good, and his love, it endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. It's forever he is faithful to us. What is it that motivates us to give him thanks today? And it's not because we want something out of him. Not because he gave us a better job or, or he provided us with stuff. We shout. We worship. We come. We enter. And we bless. Because the Lord is good. That's why. We do it because of his covenant of grace on us. Amen. We do it because I wasn't good enough because that's not why. We don't, don't do it because we're good enough, but because of his steadfast love and his enduring patience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And not just for me or not just for us, but for our children <laughs> and our children's children. Endures throughout all his faithfulness, endures throughout all generations. Amen. We do it because the covenant is not based on my obedience, but because Jesus, <laughs> Jesus was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Mm -hmm. So now I'm secured by that truth and that promise. But we can try to be obedient as, as much as we can, but you know what? try to follow that law, but you know what? We're going to fail. We cannot without the blood of Jesus covering us. Amen. That's a promise he gives to us. So you know what? No matter how many times the enemy tries to play head games with me, tell me that I'm no good, I'm not worth saving, I blew it, I messed up, nope, I'm not going to believe that. I'm going to give thanks and praise to God. Because you know what? Jesus paid it all at Calvary. Amen. He sealed me in the covenant by his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I wasn't making it to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm on my way. Amen. Because of Jesus. Because of this covenant promise here. Amen. And that's why I want to give him praise. That's why I want to give him thankfulness. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness <coughs> continues to all <coughs> generations. So there's three reasons here to be grateful. The Lord is good. 
The Lord's love is everlasting, and the Lord's faithfulness endures forever. You know, in Romans uh, 11, Paul gives thanks and praise to God. And, and, and I, I pulled up the message version of this just because I like the way it's written out. Romans 11, verse 36, it says, Everything comes from Him, meaning God. Everything happens through Him. Everything ends up in Him. <coughs> Always glory. Always praise. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. We have so many reasons to give thanks. I mean, God invites us into his presence. <laughs> He's inviting us to come to respond to his love and grace. He wants to spend time with us. Mm -hmm. And we're motivated to do so because of his love and his faithfulness throughout the years. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. I think that's cause for celebration. <laughs> I mean, we can enter his courts with praise. We can, we can uh, give thankfulness. It's celebration. It's a time of celebration. If you look back at Psalm 100 verses 1 through 3, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Why all the earth? Because he's inviting everybody. <laughs> Verse 2, worship the Lord with gladness. Sometimes we're not glad. We come Oh, I'm so beat up and this and that. But no, enter, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. <clears throat> know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. So how do we respond to God's love? How do we respond to this kind of faithfulness? I want you to notice there's three verbs that are used here in, uh, in, in thanksgiving. And the first one is shout. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Amen. So we come in thoughtfully declaring aloud God's goodness. And then when we're praising Him, that's that shouting to the Lord. There's so many different reasons to give thanks. Oh, yeah. So how do, how do we respond to God's faithfulness? Think about all the ways that God has blessed you. You put it into words. What, what God has done in your heart. And then you shout it out. You tell somebody. <coughs> that second word is worship. Right? Become passionate. Come to Him passionately. Express your heart in response to God's goodness. He is good. The Lord is good. <laughs> His love endures forever. So when you come to Him in worship, come passionately. Give Him back all that love. I mean, when we think of all that God has done for us, the natural response is worship. And this next scripture I'm going to pull up, this is three, three weeks in a row this has come out. So it's got to be important. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, he said, I'm begging you, I'm imploring you, I'm encouraging you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, mm -hmm. holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So the key word here is offer. Worship is all about offering ourselves to God. Amen. Right. Why do we worship? Well, it says here that we offer ourselves to God in view of God's mercy. <laughs> because of all of His goodness, I'm going to offer myself up in worship to God. Worship is our response to God's love. Here's the thing. God made the first move. He did. It's, now it's up to us to respond. Amen. But what does it mean to when it says that offering ourselves is our spiritual act of worship? Mm -hmm. Well, the word in the NIV for spiritual is logikos, and I probably messed that all the way up. <laughs> but it means reasonable. There's, that's where we get the word logical from. In other words, worship makes sense. Amen. It is a logical response to God's love. Mm -hmm. We worship because that is what grateful, awestruck people do. We worship because God is awesome. Amen. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. 
Now that word awesome gets used a lot. I use it a lot. <laughs> awesome can refer to the weather. It's not quite awesome out today, but uh, a sports team, yeah, a meal, a car, music. A, a, that was an awesome conference we went to. But you know what? God alone is awesome. Amen. I've kind of been convicted <laughs> that I should only use this word awesome when I'm referring to God. <laughs> because, whew, I mean, there's a lot of other things that I think are great, but God alone is awesome. Amen. Right. He's the only one that I should stand in awe of. Yeah. One way this word awe can be translated is fear. To be filled with awe means to be filled with reverential fear before the presence of the Almighty. Amen. <coughs> that word, it conveys a sense of holy terror. I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but it's what should happen when we come into the very presence of our holy God. There should be a reverence there. There should be like, oh, I'm, afraid. I'm afraid. To be filled with awe means that we have transcended our earthly view and then we've caught a, a glimpse of the eternal glory of the living God. There's got to be awe there. There's got to be a sense of, whoa! Yeah. The early church, well, they had something that might seem pretty foreign to us in today's world. They were in awe of God. We talk about that, we're like, well, you know, I love God. But that's to be in awe. They knew He alone was awesome. <coughs> that early church in Acts, verse 2, says, verse 43, everyone was filled with awe. This is how the church started to grow, because they realized who God is, and they stood in awe, in, 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 in reverential fear of the Almighty God. This verse here can also be translated this way. Everyone kept on feeling a sense of awe. So once they met the Lord, that didn't go away. It wasn't just a one-time experience. They were in awe constantly. If you jump ahead in Acts to chapter 3, in verse 10 it says, They were filled with wonder and amazement. I'm kind of running through these. Acts 9, 31 says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. And it was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers Living in the fear of the Lord. Not that, oh no, he's going to kill me. That, wow, almighty God is overwhelming. He's above, high above everything else I've ever known. <coughs> the early church grew in numbers, not because of advertising or, or even their programming. It grew because the believers lived in fear of the Lord. That's how it grew. So let me ask you a question. Do you hold the name of Jesus? honor, when you contemplate God, what comes to your mind? When you think about God, are you in awe of Him? It was A.W. Tozer who said that. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Church, if we view God with awe and with a holy fear, we would respond just like the Apostle John did when, and when he was on the island of Patmos when he came face to face with the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he writes in uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. He says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. When John had a vision of the Holy One, he became like a dead man. <laughs> he was just so in awe of him. When the church in the book of Acts focused on God, they were seized with fear and overcome with a sense of awe. What about us? You ever talk to somebody and you, you try to like that, that story in the beginning with the dog? That was amazing. But you ever talk to somebody about what the Lord has done in your life and you're met with that response of, eh, that's good for you, but you do your own thing. What? How do you not stand in awe of this? Amen. Amen. So our view of God, <coughs> our view of who God is will determine how we live. Mm. And our corporate understanding of God will enlarge and determine our future direction as a church.
who we think collectively who God is is going gonna, is gonna to determine where we're going to go, where God's going to bring us to. So what do we do? We shout for joy to the Lord. We worship the Lord. <coughs> and the third word is no. Not N-O. K-N-O-W. <laughs> what does that mean? That means we experience God's goodness in our lives in a personal way. And you know the word for no? Another, uh, another Hebrew word. Yada. That was easier to do. And it means more than just an intellectual understanding. The same word that was used in Genesis, I don't have it up here, when it says that Adam knew Eve, his wife. It means a first-hand encounter. So do you really, truly know that the Lord is God? Do you know Him? Do you know that God has made you? Do you know that you are His? Amen. I'm going to ask everybody to take time to experience God's goodness in a fresh way this coming week. And we're coming up to Thanksgiving. And I know the food, the football, the, the shopping, the, the family, all the gatherings. But let's take some time to be awestruck to the one who gives us life, to the one who is so far above and amazing. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things that this church can be thankful for. When you look back on what the Lord has done, starting in a tiny little apartment, you know, with a vision and, and, and where he's taking us, where he took us, and he brought us here all the ministries that he has us doing. However, I think that Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, I'd like us to focus not just on where has where God has brought us from, but where are we going? Where are we going as a church? Mm -hmm. In the coming year, is there a ministry maybe that God has put on your heart? I don't know. It's, it's, it's easy to ignore those ones. When God puts that on your heart, it's like, well, I don't know if I can really do it. And then it's me, you know, so you know, I'll put that one off in the back of my mind. But is there something that, that he's putting on your heart, some kind of a ministry that he's putting on your heart? Is there an area that, that God is asking you to get involved with? I just can't do that. Well, if he's calling you to that, if he's putting it on your heart, you can't do it, but he can do it through you. Amen. <laughs> Maybe God's been preparing you to, to help a certain group of people out. I mean, out of the overflow of what God, what you have received in Christ, maybe you're beginning to understand that you've been blessed so that you can be a blessing. Amen. Psalm 100, 1 through 3 again. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. I mean, that's, that's comforting. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the sheep all by themselves, they don't take care of themselves that well. They get eaten by wolves and whatnot, right? <laughs> they might break a leg and then they're just going to lay there and die. But we are his people. We are his sheep. Of his. He's taking care of us. Amen. There's so much to be joyful about, don't we? God's done so much. <laughs> so much that we should just break out in rejoicing on on a regular basis. We serve a God who loves us. A, a Savior who forgives us. A Lord who provides for us all of our needs. <coughs> and a Spirit who empowers us to do things we didn't think we could do. You know, when you read the Psalms, there's way, no way to not be gripped <coughs> by the aspect of worship and to celebrate. Mm -hmm. God is a God who wants us to praise Him. With our whole heart, right? with our whole mind, our soul, our, our, all of our emotions. You look at Psalm 33. It says, verses 1 through 3, it says, Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise Him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to Him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to Him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Psalm 47, verse 1. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Psalm 71, 23 says, My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I, who you have redeemed. Psalm 98, verse 4. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. God wants us to be joyful in our worship. And believe it or not, it's possible <laughs> to have both both. Uh, a, a reverent and rejoicing heart at the same time. Amen. It is. 
And I love this, this next song, uh, psalm here because it, it, it puts rejoicing and reverence. Joy is coupled with holiness. Our gladness is a spring out of God's awesomeness. Psalm 66, verses 1 through 3. Shout, for, shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Did you catch that? We are to shout for joy because he is awesome. Amen. Our rejoicing is to flow out of our reverence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's say we're going to do that right now. Why don't we shout to the Lord right now? We're going to get ready to, to sing another song. We're going to praise him. I'm going to tell you these altars are open. They always are. If you want to come up for prayer, I encourage you to do so. You come on up. And right now we're going to give them a shout. <laughs>